Hey, so welcome to Weirder Futures, where we talk about ideas to remake the world. One of the things we talk about a lot actually are native plants and how native plants for your specific location and your specific ecosystem support the ecosystem and really bring a lot of life to your little place in the world. So today we're going to do like a little mini yard tour and I'm going to show you some of the plants that have been really thriving for us. We're located in Houston, Texas, so these plants may not be native to your specific location, but if you're somewhere in Texas or somewhere in the Gulf Coast of the U U.S., they very well might be. Um, but even if you're not located exactly where we are, hopefully this video can be inspirational to say, you know what, there are plants out there that will do really well in my location and that don't require a ton of water and a ton of upkeep. So we've actually been in a really serious drought for the last few months. And so the plants I'm gonna show you today um, have weathered that. They have thrived actually in that. They are flowering today. It's, you know, end of September, we've been through a really long, really dry, hot summer, and these plants are doing really well. So I'm not gonna show you the full yard because uh, not everything's doing really well. We have a lot of, a lot of non-native grass and uh, other ornamentals that uh, were kind of uh, left over in the yard. We didn't plant them, you know, they've just kind of been here and uh, the heat has not treated them well. So I'm not gonna show you our yard right now as, as a whole because it doesn't look great. <laughs> uh, but I do wanna show you guys the things, again, the native plants that have made it through and how this can be such a good strategy, planting native plants, uh, to make sure that you have flowers, that you have plants to support the bees, the butterflies, all the wildlife um, that you might have coming to your yard. So let's jump in. Uh, these are Turks caps and they are a really, really pretty uh, red flower that has, again, totally thrived in this environment where it's been really harsh. <laughs> and they're great for pollinators. Um, butterflies, hummingbirds, you name it, um, they love it. And uh, up here, I'm gonna show you guys this. Um, that really pretty purple berry is a beauty berry. Um, it's great food for birds and actually it's edible for people too. We've thrown some into some oatmeal lately uh, for a little pop of color. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of flavor, uh, but it does look really pretty and it gives us this really nice purple color splash in the yard. So on the beauty berry, you'll see that there's some closed up purple flowers. Um, that's not actually flowers of the beauty berry. Um, those are native morning glories. And I'm gonna cut in some footage here of what they look like in the morning when they bloom. They are glorious. They are absolutely hands down one of my favorite native flowers to our region. Um, they just go and go and go and go. Again, it's like, you know, end of the season, but they are just thriving. And the pollinators love them. Hummingbirds in our yard pretty much every day coming to sip on these guys. We've had some really amazing sphinx moths, which I'll <laughs> include a picture of because they are really wild looking creatures and they swarm these things in the morning. Their more common name is called bindweed because uh, you can see they kind of bind up on other plants and a lot of people consider them to be weeds and pull them out, but they are a huge, huge, huge late bloomer for us and we love them. Next up, we've got Indian blankets or fire pinwheels. We have just a few of them kind of sprinkled throughout right now. They are really magnificent earlier in the summer. I'll show some footage of what they look like when they're like really going. But we have loved having them in the yard because they go really throughout the summer and into the fall. You know, they're a little less showy now than they were, but it's still great to have this little pop of color. This is another all-time favorite. These are called Spanish needles. Um, scientific name Biden's Alba, and they are this really cute little white daisy looking flower. Uh, they're in the aster family, and they go so hard all summer, uh, and they'll keep going. You can see we've got a lot of them right now, and they're gonna keep going, uh, producing flowers really through the freeze, into the freeze season for us, which you know is December, January down here in Houston. Uh, so they are amazing for having a really consistent both flower presence in your yard uh, for, you know, visuals, uh, as well as the pollinators. Bees go crazy for these things. We see lots of little butterflies and moths on them too. Uh, so a real, real standout winner. So I'm going to show you guys these really tiny pink flowers. This is a sand palifox. It's one of my favorites. Um, they're usually much larger than this. Um, let me show you a couple more. 
Uh, this year they bloomed in this really kind of tiny, cute way. Uh, and I think it has to do with the lack of rain and just how harsh it's been. Uh, but they still bloomed. You know, they're out here, they're looking cute, they're doing their thing for the pollinators. And uh, they're a perennial, so they'll come back, you know, year after year. Uh, if we don't kill them <laughs> and uh, I am just so happy to see them because they are this really great late bloomer um, they didn't even start blooming probably until mid-September or so and so they'll go you know here for another month or so probably and are just providing a lot of great food for those pollinators in a really pretty little pink pop of color and again next year when they come back they should be even bigger and showier if fingers crossed we don't have another drought um, but they're doing their thing, they're going. So this is another really amazing bloomer. It's called an Esperanza. And um, you see it's like as tall, if not taller than me. And it blooms all season. It blooms through the spring and through the fall. It's not gonna stop blooming until like the freeze basically. And so we get these beautiful yellow flowers. The bees in particular seem to go crazy for them. Um, it's not specifically uh, native to our region of Texas. It's more of like a central and south Texas thing. Uh, but again, it blooms amazing. I think it's really beautiful. We have it planted kind of near our front door so we always see it and it, it kind of freshens up the place. Um, and that's just to say, you know, again, it doesn't have to be 100% natives in your yard. Um, you know, natives have some important benefits. We'll link to some videos probably above and also below uh, about why that is. But also if something does well in your environment, which like, again, we got like zero water this year and this guy's going really strong. So, you know, take advantage of that. Take advantage of those flowers, take advantage of that food for the, for the pollinators, take advantage of the fact that it's just gonna look nice in your space. So this is another plant right behind me that is huge. <laughs> you can see how big it is. And uh, it's not blooming right now, but I'm going to cut in some footage of when it does start to bloom, uh, which is a little bit later in the fall. It's called a groundsel. Uh, really pretty kind of delicate white flowers in the fall and the pollinators go absolutely wild for it. Uh, covered in weird bees and wasps and things. And uh, it is native to this region and we love it. It's evergreen too. So uh, we have it planted in front of some of our front windows. And so we get some privacy screen year round and it just looks really pretty all the time. Green and then those really pretty white flowers. So I hope you've enjoyed this little mini tour of some of the plants that have done really well for us this year. We love our native flowers and we're excited to plant even more next year. We're going to do a focus on early and late bloomers so that we have lots of color almost year round. So we'll probably do some videos about some of those um, selections that we're making, which flowers we're choosing for what locations and why. Um, so if you like this, if you found this inspiring, give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel for more content about interesting ideas that can remake the world, both the world at large and your little pocket of the world, whether it's just your front yard or your patio or whatever. Make it a little more weird and a little more interesting and a little more colorful. Thanks so much. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye.